Another thing we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to show you how to fix skin um, using Q and saturation. Um, if you want to warm up skin or cool skin down, this is we got a couple different ways that we can do this. And I really, really like this because it works so well. So we've got this guy here. And the client says, OK, I just want to warm this up or cool this down just a little bit. I could go in and isolate his face and his skin or the wall and then use a curves adjustment layer and go ahead and sample it and go up and down. But if you want to go in and you're working with skin tones, this works awesome. And this is actually using the hue and saturation. And in this particular case, I'm going to call up my hue and saturation here. And this is where a lot of people are like, I didn't know you could do this with hue and saturation. Sure. We all know that hue and saturation, you can go in and you can change the color of everything and wow, you know, make it all look cool. But you can also go into hue and saturation and adjust certain color ranges here. Okay? So if I go in and I want to adjust just the warmer areas of this, that's great. And so at the very bottom of my hue and saturation here, we see our sliders down here where we've got our full tonal range here where the reds are going to be. But I want to go ahead and set just the particular warm areas of this image. I don't want it to control the blues or anything else. So what I do is I go in and I choose my eyedropper tool with a plus here. And with this eyedropper tool with a plus, I'm going to go over and I'm going to click on his skin because those are the tonal ranges that I want to include. Okay, Those are the ones that I want to adjust on. And you notice when we did that, if I went to my reds here, you'll see this is my tonal range right here at the bottom, and I've got my little sliders here. If I take my eyedropper with a plus and I click on his skin, you'll see those expand just a little bit. So now we've included more of the tonal range because everybody's skin is different. We may have a narrower tonal range, we may have a wider tonal range, but this is basically setting it for this particular image. I also want to go in with my eyedropper tool with a minus on it here in the hue and saturation, and I want to click on the areas that I don't want to have it messed with, which is like the blue shirt. So it's going to not do the cooler areas, it's just going to do the warmer areas. Now, with those particular areas defined here, I'm just going to adjust the warmer areas here, I can then go into my hue and saturation here, and I can either saturate more or less. I can leave it exactly the same, but I can also go in and do the hue where I can cool things down and I can warm things up overall just based on that sample range. So makes it much easier than going in and using curves and hitting the magenta or taking out the cyan saying, oh, have I done it enough? Where do I sample from? Is it in the midtones or the highlights on my ramp there? Why am I getting all these curves? Don't even bother. What's the perfect tonal range? Well, the perfect tonal range is what the client says, great, I'll pay for that. That's the perfect tonal range because it's totally subjective. We had a question? So if I didn't want to change the background, yes, I would just simply mask that out. Um, and originally what I had here in the, when the, the first, uh, I first opened the file here, I actually had the background on its own separate layer here, and then everything was cloned out on its own separate layer, and then my adjustments overall, and I did my Shift Option Command E to merge everything together so we could do that quickly. But absolutely, I could go in and I could do a hue and saturation adjustment layer just on my image right here, I could go under layer and do um, hue and saturation as an adjustment layer. And then I could go in and sample the reds here so that, oh, OK, there we go. I must have clicked off on something. Now with that, then I could go in and set my hue and saturation. That way it affects only that particular layer. And I'd want to include, actually put this above my clone layer so it includes all my cloning also. And that's the beauty of doing non-destructive photoshopping. You can move these layer adjustments around. The clone layer you can turn it on, turn it off, warm things up, cool things down, saturate and desaturate, and see the before and the after.